chapter 1106. On your side. Reader request. Robin giving Crocodile a cute, out, uh, cute outfit. See what you did there. I see what you did there. It's very funny. Very, very funny. The legs are so uncanny. Oh my god, I just noticed the legs. Anyway. Look at them going at it. Just like the paper said. Also, we're, we're moving right into the ship. He digested all that food? Feels like I'm next to... Is he not human? Watch out. We're getting surrounded by, enemy, uh, by flames. We can't stay on this island any longer. I know he's an emperor, but on the count of three, we'll all put the sea prism stone cuffs on him together. I don't think that's gonna work. I don't think that's gonna work. <laughs> One, two, what? <laughs> no, I don't think it worked. Get on the ship's egghead is done for. I mean, there's no way that Oda is setting up like some sort of weird diversion, right? Like th this is the climax of the climax. Th this is like the final act, right? Turning into a sea of fire from the shore inward. Yikes. Shoot that foolish family once and for all. Stop standing by and do something. Or I'm never gonna... I'm never gonna lift your title, Mr. Saturn, if you don't do something. Atlas, tell Bonnie. Wait, what? Tell what? Tell Bonnie what? About Luffy? Okay, that's Sanji, I guess. I'll do it, Stella. Well, she, well, she told her something. Don't shoot his daddy. Help us escape this island. Did you hear a voice? Through all the explosions? Couldn't have. What the hell is going on? I'm so confused. What? What? The pacifistas have gone rogue. And now just blasting apart the ships. This is supposed to be... Was that... What? What? Okay. What? How? How? What? 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 Hierarchy? We, we, uh, where's Bonnie? What? The one worry in the back of my mind was seeing Bonnie killed by the father of... Oh... If you were to harm the daughter you loved so much, Kuma, it would be a tragedy beyond compare. Therefore, I inserted a directive into each unit made to look like Kuma. So that even if the highest authority in the world should command it, even if the entire world should be your enemy, understand this, Bonnie. Kuma will always be on your side. Finally, my, my thoughts since we reached here are vindicated. Yes, the world's smartest man actually had a contingency plan all along. Oh my god. Oh, that's so cool though. Even if the entire world should be your enemy, understand this. Kuma will always be on your side. Okay. Well, that explains why we, why we focus so much on the authority hierarchy. And I guess this also invalidates my entire Blackbeard theory. Because my Blackbeard theory was that if this is Devon, and she can turn into them, she's going to yoink the pacifistas, right? Because she could potentially also, like, hijack the entire hierarchy. But if Bonnie is on top of all of that, then I guess that doesn't work anymore, unless she becomes Bonnie. I don't know. Very specific contingency plan, it would only work for Bonnie. Yes, but at least it demonstrates that um, Vegapunk is, uh, you know, thinking ahead. Because my question was always that, like, how would a how would a battle on Egghead even look like? Because this is Vegapunk's home turf, you know? And we know how advanced his tech is. Uh, Bonnie controlling the pacifist, so she's one of the... Exactly, that's the next thing I was going to talk about. Does this, because he says... I, th I think you're right, and I think you're also wrong, because he only talks about inserting them into the ones made to look like Kuma. And wouldn't you know it, Oda just introduced the Seraphims. I assume those aren't under Bonnie's control. So... Okay, I'm, I'm gonna change my theory right now. Just in case- I'm gonna change my theory right now before you reach the end of this chapter. I have a prediction. Now that Bonnie has flipped flipped the table, I think Blackbeard will still well not Blackbeard. I have to, I have to keep repeating myself. It's not going to be Blackbeard. It's going to be Devon. I think Devon is going to appear like from the ashes, 
you know? I think Egghead will be destroyed, and that's when they're going to pull up and potentially steal the Seraphim or something. Because I think someone raised a really, really cool point. Blackbeard saw Boa and how powerful she was. And then he saw the Seraphim Boa. Isn't that a, um, you know, let me yoink that type of deal. The S-Bear? Do we assume that it is also in the S-Bear? Because yes, you do, you do raise a very good point, but I'm not sure it's in it. I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out. This is just a selfish wish of mine. And it means... I know what comes next. This is not unexpected. It's not. But is he dead though? That is the question. You know what would be cool? If, um... Because my... My headcanon was always that, you know, we're going to have a bunch of these character arcs. Vegapunk's lab would have to be the Frankie arc again, right? Like in the same way that it was during the time skip. So we haven't really seen Frankie yoink anything from Vegapunk. So what if now that Vegapunk is dead, Frankie yoinks like the like the AI chip of, of the island and puts it in the sunny and we're just going to have like a computer going with us. I am very, very torn about this, and I don't know if it's denial. Once again, I have to acknowledge that this might be denial. The way, the reason why I'm very torn is that it makes a million percent sense for Vegapunk to die because he knows too much. His knowledge overlap with us is ridiculous. He knows presumably everything that uh, Robin wants to know. He knows presumably most of what Chopper wants to know. He knows presumably more than, uh, than well, not presumably, 100% he knows more than, uh, than Frankie does. So those are like three characters that are completely invalidated. So it makes more than enough sense for him to die. But is he really just going to be killed off right here, right now? I think some part of Vegapunk will leave, uh, live on. Like installing the Punk Records brain into the Sunny. Yes. Something like that. Yes. Yes. And we could have like an advisor in the ship, you know? Maybe he wouldn't have access to like everything he knows, but like he, he could still be a very, very smart advisor. And then maybe eventually Luffy can somehow, I don't know, revive him. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, good point. He doesn't know how to read the Poneglyphs, I think. I think so anyway. So yes, Robin is still technically necessary for that. Yes. But still, like, I, I, I think the point still stands. Vegapunk knows a lot. This is sad, though. This is very, very sad, though. Because, like, going into this arc, a lot of the stuff we saw from Vegapunk was, like, the typical scientist shtick, you know? Like, to him, all of this is just material. It's just, like, you know, it is what it is. It's just science. And now we see him 100% acknowledging what's going to happen. And he still just wants to save her. It is obvious that there will be consequences for my willful actions. Part of Vegapunk living on is going to be carried by the living satellites. The satellites are a very, very weird one. Because there are so many of them. And we had the whole, like, Among Us. I don't know what Oda aims to do with them. Because there are definitely too many. And there were, like, too many. Because just try to think about, like, how long the whole introduction to all the satellites took. Would Oda just really scrap all of that immediately? Because we haven't really haven't really addressed m many of them at all. It was only like the like the murder mystery plot at the start of the arc, which I guess has kind of served its purpose. I don't know. Sunny needs more RAM for that. How much dedated wham does it need though? Eliminate them, Kizaru. Now. Yeah, another thing I've been thinking about. Uh, I think me hoping that Kizaru is going to turn is kind of like mad copium. <laughs> like, if he is going to turn, they're cooking something big. Like, Kizaru was cooking something extremely special. Because I... Remember remember how I said about that line, we have enough players as is, or something like that. He was talking about, like, the number of players on the board. And I said that, well, little, little do you know, there's still, like, countless more that are actually not on the board, right? Because, like, the Seraphims are removed, Blackbeard is still somewhere, most of the Straw Hats are still somewhere. All of these pieces are not actually on the board yet. So maybe Kizaru is cooking something. But right now, I have a very hard time thinking that he might be. 
Uh, if the punk record brain survives, Frankie upgrading with Vegapunk stuff could be Paul's take hit. Yes. Yes. I think that's kind of what I expect now. I don't know. Because, like, he is... Again, I keep coming back to the points of this is Saturn. One of the five Elder Clowns. And he is stabbing Vegapunk. A scientist with presumably all of his points into intelligence and very, very little points into freaking uh, vigor. You know? <laughs> so... Like, he should be dead on the spot, right? Like, there shouldn't be... The only explanation I can see is, uh, it was a hologram. Because don't keep in mind, keep in mind, there was a hologram at the start of the arc. Keep in mind that that, 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 that has happened. Uh, and maybe like an energy shield. I don't know. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. I'll cut you both in two. Don't worry, Bonnie. It won't hurt. Look, Kizaru. I, I keep trying to convince myself and everyone else that you might be a good guy, but I'm having a very hard time. And Luffy's back up. Luffy's back up! Straw hat here? Full tummy, full power. <laughs> I'm having fun now. Does the island seem like it's shaking? Who cares about that? Stop the pacifistas. What the hell is going on? Come with us, they'll kill you. So he's still... The bazooka on the wall. <laughs> the bazooka on the wall might be might be moving around. The bazooka on the wall has awoken again. <laughs> so again, it's the drums that are now waking it up. Why didn't it wake up the first time? Because it's... Oh, mm. In a lot of science fiction, there's like the angle of messing with like... Um, I think Siri's listening again. Never mind. Uh, in a lot of like science fiction, when talking about like clones and stuff, you know, there's the there's like the the playing god angle and making things in your vision, right? Which is sort of why we have Kumas. Kuma is is a robot made in the vision of a man, you know. And now Bonnie, with the hands of liberation, I know Bonnie's not the hands of liberation. That's Kuma, but bear with me here. Bonnie now with the hands of liberation, is taking control of all the Kumas. And now Luffy is waking up this ancient robot. And we have the big straw hat. This whole robot angle has me so caught up. Uh, Elbaf has to answer these questions, right? Like, why do we have a giant robot and why do we have a giant straw hat? That, that's like Elbaf stuff, right? Come on. Okay, let's keep going. This rhythm. Nika? That's right. He's my idol. He appears from the blue with, the, uh, with laughter and this rhythm. Oh, uh, the freaking bars in front of the stuff. So you didn't realize it, Bonnie. I couldn't be sure until I saw it for myself. The very same straw hat Luffy that Kuma uh, had his eyes on was Nika, the sun god. That's such a cool panel. Man, I can't wait to see this in the anime. Can you imagine the payoff in the anime after seeing Bonnie's flashback of this shot? This is gonna be like Robin all over again. Oh no. Kuma was right. This buster call is futile. For centuries, people all over the world have been waiting for- WAIT! Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Is this Vegapunk? Oh yeah, he's talking now. He's talking now. Because remember what I said a couple weeks ago? That conversation between Vegapunk and Bonnie we never heard about. There was that, like, abrupt cut. When they were talking about when, uh, when Bonnie left the paths. And she was talking to uh, to Vegapunk. And we suddenly jumped to them already being near Saturn. And I was like, what happened in between? But I don't think this is it. I think this is Vegapunk talking right now. And considering that she's also now been revealed that she can take control of the Kumas. I don't think, uh, I don't think there's like anything there. I don't think there are any big secrets. Northeast coast of Veg... Hey yo. We're off the northeast coast. There's an enormous ship heading our way. That's definitely them, all right. I thought they fell apart over a hundred years ago. Oh no. Should we stop? Nah, charge right through them. We're here for your straw hat. A new state of emergency. The giant pirates have arrived. Gya, gya, gya. Or should it be Sunga? Oh my god. Oh my god, what? Number one, I have never been happier to be wrong. 
Oh, I have so many questions. What was the, um, hold on. Um, what was the, what was the Hyruden, right? Hyruden One Piece. So he is on Luffy's fleet. So that's one giant we have. Who could have potentially made contact with them? Because I, I immediately know people are going to jump on the theory that this is Shanks. No. Shanks is not here, nor, nor will he be. Shanks is not here. No way. No. No. This is either them, or this might still be the Grand Fleet with Bragi and Dory just being the first to arrive because, like, Hyruden has talked to them or something. Okay, that's number one. Number two. This is not Oda pulling a little sneaky on us. Right? And what I mean by that is, if you recall, freaking... Oda talking about how oh oh I've I've played around with the idea of the straw hats not going there. This introducing them now could could be a we're going to lead you to Elbaf right because it's our hometown we we know everyone there is going to be great or this could be a well we're not going to go to Elbaf because we already have giants let's go somewhere else. This is not Oda pulling a sneaky one on us right? Surely not. Okay, and another thing. They know about Sun God. How do they know about that? Oh, it's, prob it's probably the ancient... Oh, right. It would probably be like Saul's books, right? It would probably be like Saul's information. This is it, right? Yeah, this is it. Oh my god. Well, I can see why people were excited about this chapter. I can definitely see why people are very, very excited. Uh, all right. Let, let, me let me catch up on everything. Yeah, this arc has been very deadly. This arc has been comparatively deadly. You're right about that. <laughs> Drogi and Vori, that's what we've been waiting for! Yes, yes. Um, like I said, I am so happy to have been wrong, but the thing is, this is yet another thing on the board. They mentioned worshipping the Sun God in Big Mom's flashback? Really? I don't remember that at all. Well, that adds a whole interesting angle about, like, the world government, right? Okay, yeah, I do think Elbaf is going to be... <laughs> like, knowing that now, Elbaf is 100% going to be the location of the final war. Because, like, it, you would you would want to eradicate them at this point, right? Because, like, it's not even them worshipping it. It's not even their, their powerful military if Luffy is actually with them now. Okay, I didn't know that. Oh, uh, Hyrule and, uh, and the other giants that were for Buggy left for Elbaf after Dressrosa. My guess is they're here to meet Luffy and point us to the right direction in Elbaf and then go do their own, uh, their own thing. I sure as hell hope so. I sure as hell hope this is not friggin' Oda being, you wanted giants? Okay. I'll give you the giants. We're not going to Elbaf, though. Because, <laughs> like, I thought, you know, Shanks is now presumably gone from Elbaf. So we're gonna go to Elbaf. Presumably, we might also reunite with Kid and uh, Kid in Law. Because Kid and Law are obviously out of the running for the One Piece. But I don't think they're done as characters. Maybe, maybe Kid gets up and does something stupid again and gets killed. So, <laughs> maybe. Uh, I don't think so, though. Yeah, it's also a very good point. Like, giants, uh, giants also live a very, very long time, right? So for them, this wouldn't even be a legend. This would just be a story. It's literally like three generations. Yeah. I have so many questions. And now I'm wondering, like, remember how Jinbei... Whoops. Remember how Jinbei was sent to help out Zoro, right? And now let's flip that in the opposite direction. Let's assume that Blackbeard is not hanging somewhere on the side of the island, but he is on the island. What if something is happening there? What if next chapter we see a battle with, with the Seraphims or something, and the Seraphims suddenly stop moving and just leave? And Zoro would assume that, oh, okay. But is Blackbeard yoinking them? This is another thing on top. How the hell is this going to turn out? And is the is the robot actually going to wake up now? I've got no clue. I've got literally no idea. And there's a break. And there's a freaking break. Okay. Okay. Standing theory. Blackbeard's in punk records. Well, not Blackbeard, but two of his pirates, presumably. It's presumably Devon and or Lafitte. I don't think Blackbeard himself is here. Uh, there is a Blackbeard uh, ship here, though. So, with the Giants now coming, I assume that he's not hanging somewhere on the shores. So, he's doing something now. Anyway, my current headcanon 
This is not like a rule of threes thing, right? I think the robot might might actually wake up. I think it might. I, I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. Are we gonna like get defeated here and that's that's when we're I don't think like can we lose now? It's so so I just keep looking at the freaking splash panel of Bragi and Dory. This is so surreal. We're here for your straw hat. Oh my god. Uh does everyone think that the Navy ship going after the scientists was destroyed by the giants? Don't even say that. Don't even say that. Well, I think it, I, it's like you say that, right? It's like another thing. Well, maybe it wasn't even them, but I think it is. I think it is because like um, if we go to we go to where their ships appear, it's they're like emphasizing the same thing, right? Why are they here? They keep emphasizing the same them that we talked about last chapter. So I think it is. I think it's the same same party. Yes. Uh, Devon can transform into Bonnie and command the Pacifista. Blackbeard can control them and be the wild card. Yes. Right now, I think Blackbeard will play the part of like coming from the ashes. And basically, it's like going to be the titrul, uh, not the titrul. Um, well, it is. I guess it is a titrul. It's going to be like a feast for crows. You know, Blackbeard is going to just relax. Let them fight, and then he's gonna come in and take what's his. Presumably the Seraphim. Right? I think this this whole thing ends with Blackbeard getting the Seraphim. Because the fact that nothing with him has been put into motion yet. And again, I think it's been I think he was introduced like the ship uh next to Egghead. I think that was chapter 1079. That's a long time ago. So I think that's what that is. I think he's just biding his time, and he will make his move when everything here is done. I wouldn't even be surprised if this battle ends completely. And the next, like, imagine this, like, we sail off to Elbaf, whatever happens with Saturn, whatever happens with, with everyone on the Navy side, they leave. The chapter ends. Next chapter, we open on, like, a smoking egghead, and there's a speech panel. There's just a single speech panel of someone talking. And then we punch in on egghead, and it's like Devon or something. But that wouldn't make sense because they would probably still want to want to look for the Seraphims. Something like that. Basically, yes, I do think he is still the wild card in all of this. Uh, I still have a small hope that it was Beppo that did it and Law got the supplies he needed from the infirmary. What do you mean? Beppo did what? What do you mean? You raise an extremely good point. If Atlas knew that Bonnie can have superior... Actually, maybe not. I'm going to read the whole thing. Uh, if Atlas knew that Bonnie can have superior command over the pacifistas, how come York didn't know that? And if she did, why didn't she reveal it during the call with the, with the five elder clowns? Very, very good question. Counterpoint, immediate counterpoint, is that Vegapunk might have just told about that to her. Like to Atlas, right? Maybe they didn't know all along. That, that's an explanation I guess I could get behind. But that is a very, very good point, yeah. That is a very, very good point. Maybe Vegapunk can still control, to some extent, some information. Oh, attack the Navy ship in the last chapter? I don't know. Right now, I do assume that it was just the Giants. Because they don't really change the way they talk about them. Maybe. Maybe. They do sync- they do sync up, yeah, but I think, um... Like, we don't know when they synced up, first of all. Yeah, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. The whole information asymmetry between the between the Vegapunks is kind of what we uh, what we kept coming back to during the murder mystery, right? Because that's where like the, those small pieces of information were crucial. It seems so wild to think that like that whole murder mystery thing was still Egghead. Egghead has shifted so drastically from from how it started. It's insane. Yeah, I, I've got no clue how this will play out. At this point, like with how many big players we have on Luffy's side. I'm almost like, yeah, maybe maybe, maybe Saturn does die here. Because I think that's like the popular prediction, right? The popular prediction right now is that Saturn dies here 100%. I'm not 100% convinced. Because uh, I think like, I can see everyone getting extremely hurt, but I, I'm i kind of like, um, do I want Saturn to die? I don't think so. Uh, I think he should somehow still survive just to like emphasize how strong he is. So even up against all of this, he still doesn't go down. But at the same time, like... You know, it's not like the five elders are really a scarce resource. There's five of them. And if we are in the final saga, do we need all five? I don't know. 
That kid was just supposed to be Zoe turned into a Sabote? Kind of. Kind of. Uh, York being a leaker in the first place means that everyone had uh, the ability to hide information. Vegapunk could have been sitting on that information alone up to this point. Yes. I guess also that. Uh, Saturn survives but gets punished by failure uh, for failure by Emu. Um, good question. That could be interesting. To like, to sort of characterize him further, right, Emu. But because if you were if you were to punish Saturn, I guess that would work, right? Because this this is a this is again an incident. This is the Egghead incident. This is an incident that shakes the world. So punishing Saturn for something like this with like death would make sense because we are now entering what is a very very bad state of affairs so you know if we go back to the whole water level rising and this whole war encompassing the world this is kind of like ragnarok at this point you know we are entering the final stages of all of this so that would make sense because i was just thinking of the angle of like these dudes are extremely old and they're supposedly they they're kind of immortal right the, we've seen However many shots of them throughout the years, they look exactly the same. So, well, they're not immortal, they just don't age, right? So would you want to get rid of someone like that? But in a situation like this, I guess yes. I guess yes, because this is a huge failure. Because I really like the idea of the five elder clowns being like the... Like the easiest way to describe them is like Horcruxes for Emu, right? So in order to get to Emu, the five elders would literally have to go down first. I think that'd be cool. And that would also play into the whole, like, Puppet Master angle, right? Uh, I guess it would kind of be retreading the same story beats as we did with Dofi. You probably wouldn't want that. Uh, but I like the idea that the Five Elders, like, their power could be just a projection of Emus. And that's why we have, like, the whole summoning circle thing, right? Like, all of that is just, like, a conduit for Emus energy in some weird way. I don't know. I don't know. And by the way, another thing. Emu having these, like, um, five elders that are basically, like, his, you know, his little own private council would also directly mirror Vegapunk, right? Because Vegapunk does the same thing. Vegapunk split himself into multiple people so he could do multiple things. Well, if you were a lone king on the top, uh, on top of the world, wouldn't it be great to, like, have these little minions uh, who were maybe a project projection of you yourself and you could have this council with yourself? There was that meme. Which movie was it? There, there's the there's the meme from the movie where there's like five five clones talking to each other. Is that sort of vibe? I genuinely don't know how this is gonna play out. And th that's my favorite thing about uh, favorite thing about Egghead. I think Egghead, even if I don't like the setting, I've talked about this before. I'm not a huge fan of the sci-fi setting, everything like that. Um, I love Egghead because of how different it is. Like every arc in One Piece, big story beats you can predict very easily. With Egghead, I feel like genuinely there's no way to predict how this is going to end. <laughs> yes, very good question. How many how many people do you think know about the Sun God's existence? Uh, is it just the Fishmen and the Giants and uh, other yada yada, basically, right? Very good point. Because the more we see of him, the more a lot of people seem to know about him. Because my assumption initially was like, this is a secret that has been kept under the tightest of locks, no one knows anything about this, and that's why we are hearing about it in, like, chapter 1030, 40-something, right? That's what I thought. Apparently not. Apparently quite a few people know of it. So, I don't know. I would assume that there are, like, these pocket, pocket little communities that probably know of it. Maybe they don't know, don't even know of Nika, per se. Uh, this kind of goes back to, like, why Luffy, Luffy being this, this sort of Joy Boy liberator type deal right why it works so well is because the concept is like so vague it's just a dream of a liberator it doesn't necessarily have to be the sun god nika it's just like a, the idea of a liberator right so there might be like small pockets scattered around one piece that sort of know of nika tangentially but they don't know that it's like the sun god nika who you know dances and stuff you know i don't know though i think it'd be cool if there is like a like a spin on the chainsaw man thing right so, like, the more people know of Nika, the, the stronger he gets. Because, like, right now, I think there was even a tweet about this. I think Oda said this. It, it, maybe, maybe it was the SPS, I don't know what. Uh, but, like, Luffy gets more powerful, the more wacky he gets. Like, literally, the, the, the more fun he's having, the stronger he gets. It's like that sort of vibe. Like, the more people know about Nika, the stronger the concept of him becomes. Which would sort of make sense why, why they're getting rid of all these people. 
who knew of, of the Liberator, right? It'd be really funny if Emo and the Gorosei say Stella in the Satellites type deal. It, yeah, that's what I mean, right? Because if we think back to um, the Sabo scene, right? And all of them just becoming these shadows, it does almost seem like they all wield a similar power. I guess now, now that we've seen Saturn actually in the flesh, it was just Oda doing a keeping them in the shadows, right? So we saw the horns, but it was just like a weird shadow type deal, and we didn't really see him. You know, it's the same thing that we've seen. <laughs> this is my favorite thing about One Piece. You know how we still haven't seen Roxas' face? We still haven't seen Roxas' face. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? We've literally said, wait, no, we have seen Rox now, right? Well, anyway, <laughs> no, we haven't. No, we haven't. We haven't. Even in the God Valley flashback, we didn't. We've seen Rox's face, but we haven't actually. So it was basically that, right? But I don't think no. I don't think no. Because people were spinning up theories that like, um, Emu's fruit might have been like ink. And that like all the five elders were like projections of that inky power or something. But I guess not, because we now know that Saturn is a literal devil. Uh, yeah, Kaido did know about Joy Boy. Yes. Yes. There are a lot of, a lot of kinds of people, a lot of races, a lot of little communities in One Piece that we don't know much about, yeah. It's like, it's like, yeah, the Oni, there's the Lunarians. There are a lot of these people who we know next to nothing about. And also don't forget that Eneru is on the moon. Never forget about that little fact that Eneru is currently on the moon, or I guess Enel. Even though Eneru would be the more accurate version in Japanese, but okay. 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 I mean, Luffy is back up. Presumably the giant is gonna do anything. Bonnie has also seen Luffy. I'm, I still keep going back to that, like, distorted future thing. Remember how at the start of the arc... Not, not at the start of the arc. This is <laughs> that's definitely not at the start of the arc. A couple of weeks ago, or a month ago or so, we were talking about how Bonnie is tapping into the quantum multiverse. And she, like, can do the, sh the things she knows. Right? So, like, by limiting her imagination, you limit the scope of her power. What happens now that she has seen Nika? Because my immediate knee-jerk reaction was that she's now seen Nika, now she pops off. You know, now she's like, yes, my dad was right, now we pop off. But now she's seen it. What happens now? You know? Because the there is one dimension of the world, like, the more, the more you experience, it's basically like, like a weird metaphor for, for being a child, you know? The more you know of the world, the more cynical you become, the less you can do. Because you realize that the world is a cruel place, right? So I feel like that was the message that Oda was trying to embody with Bonnie. Like, the more of the world she knows, the less imaginative she becomes because she just becomes miserable. She sees corruption, she sees hate, she sees literal murder happening all over the place, and that's why she could never be Nika again, right? Because, like, that image is shattered. But, if we're thinking about it in the JoJo sense... I even made this joke. What if, what if someone shows a picture of Nika to Bonnie? Can she ever do Nika Distorted Future again? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's a very weird thing to get caught up on, I know. <laughs> but I find it interesting. I find it very interesting. Bonnie about to be the, uh, the uh, who makes all the rules with the pacifistas. Yeah. Like the freaking reverse Uno with the pacifistas. Because like, l let's, let's go through this. We have Luffy who is back up. Right, like, Gear 5, full tummy, full 100% power Luffy. We have, presumably, some of Vegapunk's tech. Presumably. Like, this, this is like a, like, a, like a weird point, okay? We have Bonnie, and we have all the pacifistas. We have Bragi and Dory. We have, potentially, the giant waking up. We have the Seraphim, which we're probably going to lose control over. Uh, because, you know, I mean, we already lost control over them, I guess, so let's not count that. We have like these six major things on our side. And that's not even counting Kuma. I have no idea what's going on. What I really hope doesn't happen is that like we're going to Elbaf. We are chased on the sea. And they are just intercepted by the Grand Fleet. I think I would be very sad about that. Because like if, if like the Marines and everything are just intercepted by the Grand Fleet. I don't think we're going to see like just more of them. You know, because I feel like that would be a go ahead, Luffy. We're going to get we're going to take care of this. And then we follow Luffy. I don't want that to happen. It's hard to make any judgment calls on Bonnie's fruit and the sort of future stuff. But I'm in the camp where she still be able to do anything because she, uh, she wants as long as her imagination is, imagination is wild enough. 
I think so too. Because, like I said, I do think that Oda's vision was just to, like, embody, like, a cynical adult. I think that's what he was going for, you know? In the same way that, like, because Luffy's worldview on everything is so childish, that's why he is so powerful, right? Because he doesn't... He doesn't worry about these these horrific things. He thinks about things on like a very simplistic level, but he thinks about it like on a very deep level, if that makes sense. And that is like like the heart of One Piece, you know? Um, going through hardship with fun in a weird way. But you never know. Because to be fair, like we are entering One Piece where we have the JoJo situation, right? Like the JoJo problem right now is that like, Araki has done so many different stands that the stands have become like infinitely more complex to the point that people don't even understand them anymore. And I feel like Bonnie's fruit is a little bit of that. Like, what are you going to give Bonnie to make her interesting? Are you just going to give her a zone? Well, no, because we have a lot of those. Are you going to make her a Logia? Well, Logias are boring. Uh, are you going to, I don't know, give her a Paramethia? Well, those are even more boring. So we have to give her some weird, distorted, future, magic, abstract, tap into the quantum multiverse power, right? So, I don't know. It will be interesting to see what happens with her. This is the first arc? That's a lie. That's a lie. I felt this in Sabote. Um, in the last act of Sabote, and in, at the start of Amazon Lily, that is the only time in One Piece where I felt like this. Where I genuinely have no idea what's gonna come next. I am just like, give me more. I have no predictions. I know nothing. That's how I'm feeling right now. I still think, like, Sabody was a bit stronger, because there we didn't even know where we were going. I feel like with this, like, the telegraphed path to, to uh, not Aked, to Elbath is a bit clearer. Like, I do think we're going to Elbath. I do. I still think we're going to Elbath. Aside from that, though, I've got no clue. And, like, on an individual level, I've got no idea. What's happening with Kobe? What's happening with Garp? What's happening with... with there are so many characters... <laughs> They're just doing something. Oh, no. Anyway, I forgot to give last week's uh, chapter a rating. This week's chapter gets like a... I don't even know, like a 9.99? I've got no idea. I love this. My most... Like, obviously, Bragi and Dory being back. Bragi and Dory being back just makes me so freaking happy. I can't... I, oh, it's so good. But the biggest thing for me is what's going to happen to Vegapunk. I'm very, very torn between him being killed off just because he knows too much and him being in some way incorporated into the Sunny or something. Uh, Egghead is so good. I love Egghead so much. This might be one of my favorite chapters in a long time. Just freaking seeing Brocky and Dory again. Oh, I'm so happy. He's gonna be so good. I can't wait for Usopp to see them. He's gonna be great. All right. Thank you for joining me today. Uh, I'll be back probably throughout the week. I want to finish up the next, uh, next big video because uh, I'm kind of behind on that. Uh, but I'll probably stream throughout the week if I don't. Said that for the past three chapters in a row. Shh. And don't forget that at the start of this arc, there was also the Robin stuff, which was also like a 10 out of 10. I think I gave the chapter a 10 out of 10 back then. Uh, so let's, let's, not even, let's not even think about that. Uh, which, by the way, Egghead is nearing its conclusion. There's going to be an Egghead video on the main channel soon. Can you even think about that? We're going to be back to like arc, arc videos on the main channel. It's been a long time. It's been a very long time since I've done that. That's going to be fun.